my name is Philip, and I'm a senior data scientist at Evidation Health. Uh, and I've been working on building data science products, uh, and I'd like to share some learnings and best practices with you all. So uh, in this talk, I'll be walking through how we're taking Jupyter Notebooks to production in a real world application of flu monitoring at scale with wearable sensors. So with Python libraries NBDev and Plumer, we developed a workflow that allows us to produce maintainable, robust, and production-ready machine learning pipelines directly from Jupyter. Our new workflow made pipeline development and maintenance easier and more accessible. It cut development time of pipelines by 40%, and it reduced debugging and maintenance time by 60%. So in this talk, I'll provide a brief background and overview of flu monitoring at Evidation Health. Uh, I'll walk through some of the challenges we face taking a research model and creating a production pipeline. Uh, and finally, I'll share how the MBDev and Plumer libraries really helped us overcome these challenges. Uh, so first, a quick background and overview of flu monitoring at Evidation Health. At Evidation, our mission is to enable and empower everyone to participate in better health outcomes. Built upon a foundation of user privacy and control over permissioned health data, uh, Evidation's achievement platform measures health in everyday life and enables anyone to engage in groundbreaking research and health programs. Uh, individual health has historically been assessed using episodic visible to the system data sets, uh, but working directly with individuals changes the way that we measure and understand health, disease, and outcomes. So Evidation is a two-sided platform connecting enterprises and individuals. On the individual side, we have the Achievement Platform. So this is an app that you can download uh, on the App Store. Uh, and then individuals can permission their data for personalized insights, health programs, or research. Uh, additionally, they can connect wearable devices such as uh, Fitbit, Garmin, and Apple Watch. They can answer surveys for points. Uh, and then these points can be redeemed or donated. Uh, over on the enterprise side, we partner with leading healthcare companies to understand health and disease outside the clinic walls. With our achievement platform, we enable our members to participate in groundbreaking health research. So for the past three flu seasons, uh, Evidation has deployed an opt-in flu symptom experience monitoring program. So here's an overview of the in-app flow where members are able to share their flu symptoms directly in the achievement app. Using the permission survey responses, along with sensor data from wearables like Fitbit, Garmin, and Apple Watch, we can train models for predicting flu symptoms. So last flu season, we adapted one of our flu and COVID-19 detection research models and deployed it within the Achievement app to provide daily, flu, uh, daily predictions of flu symptoms to our members. Uh, we ran a small scale POC in production with several thousand enrolled members where we computed features from wearable activity data. Uh, so this included uh, features around activity, heart rate, and sleep. Then we cast daily predictions with an activity-based machine learning model. Uh, and finally, we sent out notifications to our achievement members uh, where the model had predicted positive flu symptoms. So the POC was a big success overall, but there were a lot of headaches for the data science team. And yeah, I, I wanna walk through like, what are the many challenges that we face when productionizing machine learning pipelines? from having to deal with feature drift and data leakage to latency requirements, like there's a lot going on. Uh, in this talk, we're gonna focus more on the software dev and engineering side of things. So data scientists love using Jupyter Notebooks for the fast iteration and development, uh, but there are issues with using them in prod. So there's two main options. One is we can use the notebooks in production or the second option is we take the development notebooks and we translate them to a non-notebook code base. 
If we go with option one, using the Jupyter Notebooks in production, because they're stored in JSON, they have historically been a real pain to version control and code review. This makes standard development workflows cumbersome and the entire development and re review process really gets bogged down. Uh, using notebooks also encourage the use of monolithic notebook files to run the pipeline. Uh, and these like mega files are really difficult to update and iterate upon. Uh, testing and monitoring them is really manual and slow. And debugging requires re rerunning the whole pipeline file. So even if it's just a small part of the pipeline that needs to be debugged, um, you have to rerun the whole thing. And this is really cumbersome and slows down iteration. Uh, additionally, trying to use notebooks in production often ends up involving a hybrid use of notebooks with Python modules, where your notebooks are calling to Python utilities. Uh, so it's actually kind of hard to solely use notebooks in production. So this brings us to option two, which is to translate the notebooks to a non-notebook production code base. Uh, the issues with this are it's time consuming and it adds complexity. High overhead to uh, adding testing and documentation frameworks into your code base uh, means that there's a high burden uh, to integrating them. And then tests and doc docs risk becoming an afterthought. Uh, source code tests and docs often end up living in different files. Uh, so this also increases maintenance costs, makes it more likely that these pieces will quickly become out of sync. Uh, finally, the translation process increases the distance between uh, development and production, which increases the likelihood that the model behavior in development won't match production. So this brings us to Plumer. We did a comparative analysis of open source pipeline orchestration tools, and we picked Plumer because it's easy to get started with, uh, easy and accessible for data scientists across the org to adopt. And it supports both Python and R, uh, which is great because we have both R and Python data scientists in our org. We wanted to enable everyone to adopt workflow management. Uh, additionally, Plumer supports or orchestrating and developing with Jupyter Notebooks. So with Plumer, we're able to rapidly iterate, explore, and develop directly using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, it enables modularization, so we can easily break the pipeline up into separate tasks. Uh, and it really saves us a lot of time with incremental builds, so we can speed up the debugging process. So diving into the first point, uh, rapidly iterate, explore, and develop with Jupyter Notebooks. So Plumer uses Jupyter to seamlessly convert between Python and IPyNB files. And this means that we can continue working and developing with Jupyter. So we're able to reduce conversion costs. Uh, it enables faster development and iteration. And it allows us to create living log files. So these are executed notebooks outputted from runs where we can easily integrate docs, metrics, plots, source code, uh, anything that you could include in a Jupyter notebook, uh, all into one accessible file. Uh, and this really makes developing and debugging the pipeline uh, much more accessible for data scientists. Uh, Plumer also stores source code for tasks as Python files, uh, which makes things really easy for us to version control and code review. And uh, it allows team members to use their preferred IDE. So for certain development tasks, Jupyter Lab might be better to use. Uh, something like VS Code might be better for others. Uh, and this way you get the best of both worlds. So the second piece is Plumer enables modularization uh, so we can easily break the pipeline up into separate tasks. Plumer lets you set up and manage the DAG definition, including the individual tasks, their products. Uh, so these are the outputs of the tasks and the various parameters that you wanna set. So there's no more need to hard code any of this, uh, which is awesome. Uh, Plumer also makes it easy to split up the pipeline into small modular tasks. Uh, so you can now easily have multiple data scientists uh, take on separate tasks and work on the pipeline in parallel. And modular code is also way easier to test and manage. Uh, here on the bottom, 
uh, we have an example of a cell that Plumer has automatically injected into a notebook with run parameters and product paths. Uh, so you can see it's injected the run type and the run date and the paths to the output files have also been dynamically added. Uh, notice the output paths have the run type and run date within the path. So Plumer has actually made it really easy to organize our outputs across different parameterized runs of the pipeline. This also helps us create a, our living log files that data scientists can easily access for debugging and development. When we save and close the notebook, this temporarily injected cell will automatically be removed. Uh, so these run specific parameters don't end up saved in our source code. Uh, and finally, Plumer helps us save time with incremental builds and speeds up debugging. Uh, so Plumer tracks the status of tasks and if they're up to date or if they need to be rerun. Uh, and this really helps us speed up development and iteration, uh, as well as debugging and crash recovery. Uh, so looking at the plot on the right, we have an example of a Plumer DAG with different tasks, uh, outputs, and dependencies. And if we introduce a source code change towards the end of the pipeline, Plumer knows it doesn't need to rerun the whole thing, just the end. Uh, so this saves us a lot of time. Uh, if you have like long running pipeline tasks, uh, you don't have to rerun the whole thing. Uh, and then outputs, uh, Plumer also outputs an executed uh, notebook file for each task. So this makes debugging much easier and more accessible. Uh, the output notebook and artifacts lets you immediately locate and identify the failure, interact with the code at that point in the pipeline, and uh, makes it really easy to point teammates to the issue. So this tremendously increases the speed of debugging and failure recovery. Uh, Plumer helped us solve a lot of our pipeline orchestration challenges, and we're now able to easily manage our pipeline with modular Jupyter notebook tasks. But we still needed a we, we still needed to package our pipeline to make it portable. So packaging our repo helps us modularize the utilities that our notebook tasks rely on. Uh, and this makes them importable from different directories. So this is really necessary for us because we want to be able to easily run our output notebooks in various output artifact directories without running into uh, Python import issues. Uh, we also want to bring in best practices of software engineering to our pipeline. So this includes uh, testing, documentation, and continuous integration. Uh, as I mentioned before, setting up this code base can get pretty complicated and usually means we lose our notebooks. So this is where NVDev comes into play. So NVDev is a library developed by FastAI that allows you to develop a Python library in Jupyter Notebooks, putting all of your code, tests, and documentation in one place. With MBDev, uh, we're able to develop directly with Jupyter Notebooks, uh, which allows us to explore and iterate rapidly. Uh, source code, tests, and docs are all kept in one accessible location. Uh, MBDev automatically creates Python modules from Jupyter Notebooks and supports two-way sync. So you can edit the modules directly, uh, use uh, whichever IDE you feel most comfortable with. Uh, it also automatically creates searchable hyperlinked documentation from your code. Uh, it automatically sets up continuous integration. Uh, so you can automatically run tests in parallel uh, and build docs on push to GitHub. Uh, and finally, it handles conflicts, uh, makes version controlling and code reviewing notebooks really easy. Uh, so here we have a testimony in the wild from a data scientist that was onboarding to this project. And they were just so impressed by how easy NVDev was making development with Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, and then on this slide, we have an overview of uh, what using NVDev looks like. So we have the Jupyter Notebook uh, in the top left, and this is where we have our source code, examples, tests, and docs. These notebooks really let you tell a story with the code you're developing and let you keep all this useful content in, in one central place. 
Uh, NBDev then converts this notebook into a Python module and automatically sets up the CI to make sure that your package is building correctly. Uh, it's running the tests that you defined in your notebooks and it's doing that in parallel. Uh, and it creates the HTML pages for your docs. Uh, so on the right side, we have an example of one of these HTML pages. Uh, and uh, you can see it's automatically uh, created, organized in searchable documentation, complete with a uh, table of contents, uh, API references uh, for your source code, uh, examples and tests that you had defined in your notebook, uh, doc strings and explanations, uh, and even links to source code. Uh, so here's another example of a page that's been automatically generated by nbdev from a Jupyter notebook. Uh, this page serves as the readme for the repo. Uh, so new uh, contributors can quickly get up to speed by looking through the documentation on how to contribute. Uh, they can get an overview of the repo and what the different files and directories are for. Uh, they can see an automatically generated plot of the Plumer DAG uh, outlining all the tasks in the pipeline. And since this is all a Jupyter notebook behind the scenes, it's really trivial to add things like plots or images or markdown to your documentation. And so now that setting up documentation is so easy, we can more easily in ensure that our docs are up to date and uh, really make it easy for our data scientists to onboard to new uh, projects. So what, what are the key takeaways that I hope you'll take away from this talk? Jupyter is a production ready platform. With MBDev and Plumer, we developed a workflow that allows us to produce maintainable, robust, production-ready machine learning pipelines directly from Jupyter. And this flu season, we're doing it again. So we're running, uh, we're currently running in production to send personalized daily flu predictions to hundreds of thousands of achievement members. Uh, and this was really enabled with Plumer and MBDev. Uh, Plumer, which allows us to develop and orchestrate our pipelines and lets us rapidly iterate, explore, and develop with Jupyter Notebooks. It enables modularization so we can easily break up the pipelines into separate tasks. Uh, and it saves time with incremental builds uh, and speeds up debugging. And then uh, we're able to create Python uh, projects with NBDev uh, so we can develop software with Jupyter Notebooks. We can keep all of our source code tests and docs in one place. Uh, and it automatically sets up testing building docs and CI for us. So here are some resources you may find useful. Um, the developers of Plumer and NBDev have great tutorials, uh, blog posts, and documentation on their websites. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about these tools, I highly recommend checking those out. And if you're interested in learning more about the work and research we do at Evidation, please feel free to reach out and check out our website. Um, so thanks so much for having me and uh, yeah, happy to take any questions. All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, <clears throat> this uh, talk, Philip. So I'm going to review. I think uh, Eduardo Blancas is mentioning this is an amazing talk. I'm also reviewing our question and answers panel. Well, for our participants, does anybody have any question? All right, thanks a lot, uh, Dan. We have one question from Dan. And uh, he's asking, asking, are users of R able to contribute to the indie development work? Yeah, so um, the this is a new workflow and it's um, been used with a lot of success with our Python users. Um, the Plumer does support uh, R, um, but it hasn't been tested. So I'm, I'm not sure if there's uh, any, um, yeah, any like edge cases where it doesn't work uh, with R, uh, but it's something that we'll definitely be uh, exploring in the near future. That's all right, Philip. 
Well, there's another comment from Philip who says, this was a nice talk. Thank you very much, Philip. Thanks also for the library's references. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, glad to help. So that's it, Philip. I want to thank you very much for your time and your wonderful presentation. I think it's quite interesting knowing about new resource, resources such as Bloomberg. Bloomberg, yeah. So I'm going to stop the report recording and we are going to get ready for our next session, which is going to begin in just a few minutes. Thanks so much for having me.